Wheel studs. Why do they break? <laughs> G'day there. Uh, welcome to 2024. Today we're going to talk uh, wheel studs. And um, this is a video I also shot um, quite some time back and decided not to run. But there is increasingly a lot of talk about broken wheel studs, particularly on the Land Cruisers. <clears throat> and I think, in my personal opinion, there's some very good reasons for why that happens. I used to break a lot of them in my old Land Cruiser, and uh, uh, when I figured out why, um, I didn't break any. So, again, this is only in my opinion. I'm not a uh, mechanic by a long stretch, but um, I think this might save you some drums. So firstly, you want to make sure your surfaces are clean, uh, your mating surfaces, wheel and hub. And then you want to make sure you've got the right nuts. Now you'll notice here that these two nuts are very different. One on the left is for aluminium or alloy wheels, one on the right is for steel wheels. They have a different pitch. It's very important to remember that you can't use a steel wheel nut on an alloy rim and vice versa. Okay, so I've just put my artistic skills to work and drawn a couple of wheels. Just imagine that these look like that. Okay, so first and probably most important thing to remember is what sequence to start talking your nuts in. So in this case here we've got five stud, which is what the new Land Cruisers have got. So we've got one, two, three, four, five studs there. When I tighten these, I do them in several stages, over three or four stages. And I always tighten them in an opposing manner. So one, two, three, four, five. And what that does is it enables your wheel to center properly and bed properly. Now, same goes for a six stud. It's actually a little bit easy to do on a six stud. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's really important to remember to do it that way because if you tighten one of these without tightening the opposing one, your wheel is not gonna bed right eventually going to work its way loose, it's eventually going to start slapping around on the studs and there's a good chance you're going to break a stud. That's one reason for why I think the studs break. Okay, so another reason can be found in the glove box. And this thing. So firstly, right here it talks about aluminium wheel precautions and it's, it's very clear about checking your wheel nuts after traveling a short distance so we're talking 1600 k's i'd probably be checking them before that uh so you know i bet not too many people do that but uh it's very clearly stated in the manual and for a very good reason with aluminium wheels. The next most important thing to note in your manual is wheel nut torque specifications. Now I don't know how many times I've seen people leaning on their tire irons trying to get those nuts as tight as they possibly can. It's not good for your wheels, it's not good for your threads, it's especially not good for your studs and I personally think this is the number one cause of why uh, studs break because they're over torqued. And you'll notice the torques aren't that high. Uh, for those of you that uh, don't understand torques, um, they're very specific and you need a special uh, tool to, to torque them up. So um, if you don't have one of those, I suggest you go out and get one. It's a torque wrench. And we'll have a look.
look at that later. But these these are really important. Very important. So we've just finished cleaning your car after a weekend out in the mud, as I've done here. And you've had the wheels off to give it a good clean, so it's a few things you need to check. You want to check that there's no mud or grime in your wheel nuts or on your studs. So give them a good clean. Tighten your nuts up finger tight only for the first rotation. The idea of this is to get the wheel to seat properly and centered. Use your torque wrench to do a firm but not tight rotation of the nuts. Do a final rotation of all the nuts in sequence until the torque wrench sets. I also like to do just one more pass to make sure all the nuts are at torque just in case the wheel hasn't bedded properly and one of the nuts is feeling a little bit loose it kind of indicates that something's gone wrong and you should investigate it further. I should note that there's a common misconception that the centre part of that hub takes all the weight. It actually doesn't as is demonstrated by this little part of the video here. I can actually move the wheel up and down. So let's have a look at this in real time. I've got my wheel on, I've done the checks and I'm starting to do these up just finger tight. You'll notice I've wriggled the wheel around a little bit just to get them to seat properly. And you'll notice I come back to that nut to just nip it up a little bit more because you can see the wheels moving around there still. Just finger tight, doesn't have to be much. The whole idea is to get the wheel to centre on that hub and get those nuts bedding in properly. Also notice that I'm going from side to side, which I think I might have messed up just there, but the whole point is to go from one side to the other. Opposite side there. that one's binding up a little bit. We did actually pull that off later to have a look at what was going on and it did replace that wheel nut. Uh, the thread on that wheel nut was damaged for some reason that we cannot work out. So then I go around and do my second tighten, just nip them up. I'd suggest doing this with a torque wrench so you don't over tighten them at this stage. So I chose to use the tire iron. Just going around, nipping them up so that, that wheel's centering and seating nicely. Then with the torque wrench, just set to the specified torque. Go around from side to side, tightening the nuts in an opposing fashion. them again just to make sure that they have nipped up to the correct torque. Sometimes if you find that you've got a loose nut at this point you can indicate an issue like something stuck behind the wheel or it hasn't seated properly. Check them again and I'm pretty fussy about all this so I do another final check just in a circle to make sure that they are at the correct torque. Well, yeah, let's take a quick look at this torque wrench. Please excuse my messy bench. So this is a fairly cheap one that I, that I got and it does forwards and backwards and it's got multiple settings. You can adjust the settings so that uh, you can set it for whatever you need. And a pretty handy tool to have because most things in your car uh, have a torque setting or a required torque and um, you know it's quite important to get those exactly right. Now these things do need to be calibrated occasionally and they are a fairly sensitive tool so you can't just throw them in your toolbox and let them bounce around. 
But that's it, that's what they look like. So there you go. It might seem like a lot of messing around, but it's really not, and it's very important. Um, remember to check them, like the manual said, uh, every 1000 to 1600 k's. I personally like to check them if I'm, if I'm doing a long trip. A lot more than that, I'll nearly check them every time I stop. Uh, it's just some, something to get in the habit of doing. It's good practice. I mean, truck drivers do it. Um, and for very good reason, we don't want a truck wheel in the windscreen. So, um, I think that's about it. Uh, I'd highly recommend that people take on these habits. Um, but, you know, it, it's my opinion. And it's uh, totally up to you, but I personally don't want a wheel coming off and going through somebody's window and injuring somebody or worse. So, uh, yeah, so that's about it. And thanks very much for watching.